Maddox. Absolutely. Okay, let's bring in Lee Harding. And I'm sure you guys know each other. Um, yep. Both very, uh, you know, astute in understanding politics, both here in Canada and the United States of America. So, uh, Lee, I know you've been sitting in the, the background there watching. What What is your initial comments here on um, what's going down in the United States of America? My initial comment is that Daniel Boardman is the man and he is way funnier and smart, smarter than I, and he's even good better at math. grammer. Yeah. He yes. More, he's yes. better at math than getting girlfriends when he was younger. Who needs girlfriends? I Just get a wife. I bet that's changing though, right? There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So I, what's my comments? We knew this was going to happen. I think it reminds me of that coach where uh, the guy says, the Bears are who we thought they were. They were who Denny we Green. thought they were. Yes, that's the guy. And we let yeah. him off the hook. You let him off the hook. Now, if you want to crown him, then crown the ass. But the Bears are who we thought they were. We let him off the hook. Then he walks off. 2006, the Rex Grossman, his last game as a good quarterback. I remember watching that one. Great melt. Yeah. Like I said, Daniel is the man, okay? Yeah. I want to read you some things. First of all, I will say, how did I know this was going to happen? Uh, because I follow the alternative sources and not the mainstream media sources. And mainstream media completely failed people. Even Fox News was terrible. There were statistical times where they should have been calling states and they didn't. There were times when Biden states were called for him. And, and they should not have been called. This created a narrative. And then the fact that they stopped counting votes in certain states at a certain time, I mean, it just adds to this thing where the whole thing is put in doubt, whereas it should have been a runaway for Trump. It shouldn't even have been close. That's one of Trump's favorite sayings. Not even close, not even close. But really, it should not have been even close. So I want to look through a few things. Now, you might remember the old days of journalism where maybe you'd see a guy reading the news, hear some, some uh, typewriters in the background and whatnot. I've just I've screenshotted some things from Instagram, put them on my story list. Uh, okay, first of all, Trump team has filed 17 lawsuits so far. Okay. Uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania were bright blue on election night, and Democrats woke up to mysterious chunks of 100,000 plus votes that went all, you know, the other way. Um, okay. Now, this thing with the watermarks on the votes, uh, what the claim is, is that they have radioactive isotopes and watermarks and other identifiers. And so ballots that are printed by other parties or foreign countries will not pass muster when challenged in court. Yes, but that's assuming that there wasn't an insider who could uh, replicate those or have access to whatever process by which it was done. Uh, and you do have to start thinking like that when you see how much has gone wrong here. I mean, it, it defies, if, if you have any pretense of, oh, people are just trying to do the right thing here and whatnot. No. And actually, Joe Biden had a senior moment, a Freudian slip, a Biden moment, whatever you want to call it, where he actually said two weeks ago that he and Obama had the greatest voter fraud scheme in history going. Now, maybe he was trying to say that they addressed it, but his actual statement was is that they had the best. He's telling you. I mean, it's just like when he said, uh, I'm Kamala Harris's running mate. Y'all think I'm kidding, don't you? Uh, yeah, no, he told you. He told you. Okay. So uh, here's something from James O'Keefe. Project Veritas has been contacted, Daniel mentioned this, by a special agent within the Office of Inspector General for the United States Postal Service, who's aware of our video, believes the allegations of wrongdoing fall under their jurisdiction and they are assessing whether an investigation is appropriate. Here's the thing. They want to look like they're doing something. Uh, I don't think that, I mean, the thing is, okay, let's see this uh, thing with 138,000 votes in Michigan. Oh, we meant 13,800. You don't just get 90,000 votes wrong. That's not how it works. You don't add block numbers to a total and say these are the number of votes. They're just covering their butts. That's all. Or trying to. And I don't think we're buying it. We're not going to let them off the hook. Okay. Um, <laughs> I guess Trump has said that uh, they won Pennsylvania and they'll be on track for re-election by the end of the week. Here's a headline that hasn't made a lot of news. Trump won the highest share of the non-white vote of any Republican since 1960. 
Wow. And of course, that was the year totals. that Biden's lead grew a bit today. As new numbers Sorry, came in again, from Clark County. That down. Yeah, well, that's, that's okay. amazing that statistics. Music. Yeah, it was beautiful. Um, but it was, but that, it, that, that is phenomenal. Every voter here. category except white men. Hmm. Yeah, he went it's down in that men, category. White, and I, I'm not... white, six, Maybe they had white to, heterosexual uh, males are to blame for Joe Biden. What's wrong with those people? No. Yeah, I on? mean it's it's very strange. <laughs> but I, I, maybe maybe they decided the Democrats finally decided that they needed to have some diversity in uh, the fake ballots that they used, and they finally decided to reach out to uh, to white men because they hadn't done that before. Is it something to do with white privilege? Do you think? Do you think that they somehow have to go along with that narrative? Because that that seems to be happening too. Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's. It's not the truth. It's what you can sell with these people. Um, okay, here we have another thing. Uh, Twitter was censoring voter concerns over Michigan ballots. It was it was trending, but they would not show it on the trending line. There were like fifty six thousand tweets on it. Uh, here's one from a screenshot from uh, Fox News in Detroit. In Detroit, uh, there's a lawsuit filed by the Public Interest Legal Foundation. Pilf. Hmm. Okay, 4,788 duplicate registrations, 32,519 more registered voters than eligible voters, 2,503 dead people registered, one voter born in 1823. Will this be the last election he votes in? Wow. I mean, you can't make this up. James O'Keefe from Project Veritas has received nearly 1,000 tips about potential voter fraud in this election. Keep them coming, he says. We are processing them as fast as possible and sending cameras where they are needed 24-7. Woo, he's on it. Um, okay, what else we got here? You know, if you look at the timeline of uh, some of the, these election races, it's it's you, you know it's wrong. In both Michigan and Wisconsin, the Republicans are winning, 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 and all of a sudden in the timeline, there's a vertical line that goes straight up. And now all of a sudden the Democrats are winning because it's vertical because all these fake ballots came in. Okay, right. well, now Trump- one of those uh, one of those tweets today, it said a 118 year old William Bradley voted with an absentee ballot uh, for Joe Biden today. So, uh, you know, these things are being discovered, get it, you know, being put out there. Well, that makes a lot of sense. The dead vote would go to the candidate that is half dead. Um, <laughs> that is closest to being there. <laughs> yeah. Well, in this age okay. of non-discrimination, all of the zombies from Halloween had to cast their ballots there, the ones that really don't have brains. And, uh, and who did they vote for? Uh, okay, so Trump's saying, and this is in Breitbart, did I predict this? I've been saying this from the day I heard they were going to send out tens of millions of ballots. Um, what else have and we he got has here? been saying that. You know, he has been saying, he's been saying that uh, there's going to be a problem with this. And we, we've seen all the videos leading up to this. I mean, Daniel, what's your comment on that? Because uh, you'd see a guy in a car and he's taking video. He's got like, look, man, I got all these, you know, ballots. And, and uh, so that, that was the, that was the Minnesota one. Um, and I've covered that a lot. And there's been so many whistleblower reports of voter fraud in uh, Minnesota, uh, Minnesota, primarily in the Somali community. Uh, and I covered that. And and this is this is a sort of a multifaceted problem. Um, and what's happening in Minnesota and even Democratic candidates, Somali Democratic candidates have come out and blown the whistle too. And what they're saying is these elections in Minnesota are basically being run like they're in Somalia. This is the primary problem here is non-integration. So they're not integrating the Somali community. And then what's happening is you have these sort of uh, low income high rise communities, these groups of, you know, mostly Somali, you know, residential buildings. And what the you know, political operatives are doing, you know, Ilan Omar's people and, 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 and friends, they're basically going in and they're either, you know, taking people's ballots who are confused or buying people's ballots, right? So they're going to small community and saying, you know, 200 bucks a vote, you know, you vote us, we give you this money, uh, go in. And there was even a whistleblower, at small community, like he was a doctor or whatever, and he was trying to blow the whistle because she, you know, says like, you know, when people say things about Somalis and we all get angry, like, well, this is a thing that's happening, right? And he's telling stories about, you know, I was going around to people and they say, oh, you're very nice. Um, so I'll vote for you for only a hundred dollars. They offered me 200, but if you give me a hundred, I'll vote for you. 
And this is going on all over Minnesota, multiple whistleblower accounts, video evidence. We have all of this. And somehow Ilan Omar is complete Teflon on all of this. And, you know, and then the other problem is, so the first is, you know, okay, we got an integration problem. We got a voter fraud problem. And then the third facet of this problem, the major facet, is the media, right? The fact that if there is video evidence that there is an illegal voting ring, if there's an actual whistleblower within the Democratic Somali community candidate making a video, putting it out there, how does that not end up on MSNBC? How does it not end up on CNN? How is it on the Washington Post? How is it on the New York Times? So this is the complete distrust in the institutions. Now, one of the things that we're seeing, and you know, if I only followed conservative Twitter accounts and conservative people, I'd probably be going a bit insane right now because I'd be seeing all the pro-Trump stuff. It's because I can I follow some crazy left-wing lunatics. Like, you know, I got the Linda Sarsour and the Sean Kings on my feed, but I follow some reasonable liberals too who are, who are giving their perspective and, and the counter narrative. So it's keeping me kind of sane. But all the data shows that the blue check mark Washington Post, New York Times people only follow the blue check mark Washington Times, New, or not Washington Times, New York Times people, right? So it creates this sort of echo chamber where they probably don't even, might not even know Project Veritas, or they just hear Project Veritas and they go, oh, that's right wing. So we don't, we don't, we don't listen. La, 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 la. You know, this, this is, this is what's driving a lot of people insane. It's that there is a sort of a hermetically sealed ecosystem within the left wing uh, media that's gone. What is even up with Fox News? I mean, Fox News has always had Democrats on it. And, you know, Fox News is in this chaotic state. And then you have alternative media, which, you know, for better or worse, you know, tends to skew a bit more right wing right now, because I think that's because conservatives don't have an outlet in the mainstream. So, you know, the, these, are, these are the problems we're facing here where because we can't, you know, how, how, am, I, how am I supposed to expect that they're going to take voter fraud seriously if in sort of Minnesota, we've had for months video evidence, multiple whistleblowers coming out, multiple videos, multiple whistleblowers, and they can't address that honestly, well, then you hear something shady happens in Michigan and you go, well, it must be more voter fraud. And you know that, oh, well, the, the establishment, the deep state, they're not going to look at it. Um, so again, trust erodes in the institutions once again, and it leaves us in a state where, you know, people, everyone's afraid of civil war, and you have the media reporting on this potential riot in Arizona. Um, because Trump supporters, you might be horrified, but they're actually kneeling and praying, um, kneeling and praying, not just kneeling and not just praying, but they're kneeling and praying, which is near riot conditions, according to the media. And there's freaking out and they're intimidating people. In the same time in Portland, you know, there's actual rioting. There's actual rioting in Portland. And that's, no, it, n not yeah. worth covering. It's all, it's all completely legitimate rioting. They're rioting because... I don't know, Black Lives Matter. Who knows? Who cares? That's all good. But there's Trump supporters, and they might be rioting. They might start saying hymns. Who knows? They might sing off tune. Who knows? Like this is this is the state uh, of a, of of our of the Western world, and it's not healthy. Well, people are praying, and you're exactly right. Uh, the loss of trust in the establishment, and even the pollsters, you know, who predict all of these things, who are have been completely wrong. I mean, no matter how this goes. The pollsters have been so wrong, uh, giving Biden double digits in some states, and it hasn't proven to be the case at all. Um, I have a clip here I want to show you guys of them covering up the uh, the windows, you know, of. Mm -hmm. So here we have the polling station basically needing to, uh, you know, cover up the windows. I mean, so that people can't look in to see what's going on. Like stuff like this is just crazy megalomaniac um, control freakishness. And, uh, you know, you, you got to like, let's just have an open process. Again, what better Absolutely. way to, to erode the trust in transparency and in institution than to just literally board up so no one can see? And I mean, that's all I'll say on that. I'll let Lee in there. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, doesn't that say it all? And I think these people are overplaying their hand because one by one, I mean, there's some people that are going to follow the CNN narrative always just because CNN said it. And so CNN could tell them anything. And I think they know that because 
with the non-coverage of Hunter Biden's laptop and all of this, I mean, if you thought there was any shred of objectivity in some of these institutions, there isn't. And James O'Keefe himself found that out years ago. Okay. Uh, I have found the quote here of uh, what Joe Biden actually said. It was, quote, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. Ha, nice to be inclusive when you cheat. Uh, all right, okay, from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m., 1 million votes for Biden in Pennsylvania were found. 3.30 to 4.30 a.m., 140,000 votes in Wisconsin were found. And from 3.30 a.m. to 5 a.m., 200,000 Michigan Biden ballots were found. Not suspicious at all, this person says. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, oh, Iran is picking. It says, Joe Biden more promising for us than Donald Trump. Always want to have course. Iran's endorsement. Yes. Uh, what else Should have we, we got here? Up? Let's listen to this guy live. Just, just sure. listen to this guy's live. Let's see what he's saying. This is, I believe, uh, Donald Trump's um, situation, not far from where you are, Kate. Um, yeah, he, he's one of the pivotal about, people. Oh, we kind of missed his comment there. Can't. Yeah. He said, I'm going to stop talking to all of you and I'm going to tune into Laura Lynn's channel. Yeah, Goodbye, I think everyone. They are watching uh, us right now. Um, I mean, he was mad. We showed his clip earlier. This guy was like, just have a fair process. I mean, that's all that's required here. And I like what you had to say, um, Daniel, like it's just counting, like let's count, you know, it's counting. Um, let's do it. Why is it? And how long it's taking? Put I remember in, 2016, right? We were all on pins and needles, but by midnight we knew Donald Trump won, you know, like we knew that by like 10, but they wouldn't announce it till three, but Still, yeah, I mean, you can you can argue mitigating circumstances of 2020, COVID, the increased mail-in ballots, the the problems with like with uh, following procedures. I could buy a 2020 COVID-19 pandemic excuse that gives you an extra day. You can't drag this out to three days. You can't say we're going to get results on November 12th. It just looks silly. Um, I actually think the most important thing is is actually what you said right before you brought Lee on um, about what this vote is and. You know, what the vote for Donald Trump is, or against the Democrats, you have to understand, Joe Biden, the moderate, has come on and said, America is systemically racist. Um, are you going to vote for the party that, that says the country is bad? Like, if your country is systemically racist, your country is an evil thing. Like, Iran is systemically racist. They have laws. You're not legally allowed to be a Baha'i. Right, it's considered blasphemy. If you're convicted of being Baha'i three times, you'll be put to death. I have a friend who was in an Iranian prison, and his cellmate was a 16-year-old kid who was Baha'i who had just gotten his third violation for being himself and was basically on death row. Now, Iran doesn't execute you until you turn 18, so they don't kill children. They just, you know, keep you locked up till you're 18, then they kill you. That's systemic racism. Right? That's a systemic problem. To say America is a systemically racist place, a place that will discriminate in black, brown, and all this, right? You're going to vote for the candidate who says your country is a bad place. And that shows you where the Democratic Party is right now. This is the moderate, right? If AOC says it, if Bernie Sanders says it, you can go, all right. But the so-called moderate, the guy who's going to hold the line, Joe Biden, when he gives in, yeah, you know, eight-year-olds, sure, change their gender. And yes, yeah, America is systemically racist. It's bad. You know, what are you voting for there? Like, is Trump really that that evil that you say, oh, we must protect him to put in Biden to save the country? Well, Biden has said the country is not worth saving. Now he's gone and gone against that. But once you say America's systemically racist, you're saying your country is a bad place. And the fact that that that's acceptable in, in, in modern times from a presidential candidate is is terrifying. Well, then you put that, uh, Daniel, added to what Lee's, uh, you know, just given us this information about how many um, you know, minorities have actually voted for Donald Trump. And then you realize they're not actually buying into this perspective at all. They're not buying it. And that makes total sense. Right. It makes total sense why the why every every minority category has increased their vote for Trump. It makes total sense because the mm -hmm. left has told them for four years, hey, brown people, black people, whatever LGBTQIS, whatever people. When Donald Trump gets in, you are going to die. You're going to die. People will come for you. Racism will increase. Your lives will be unbearable. 
unlivable. You're going to die of racism. Racism will be everywhere. And then a lot of people went, oh, no, no, no. And then after you're like, I've been told I'm going to die. Like, this hasn't materialized. Like, there, there is, there is no, there, there's no peep, there's no burning cross on my lawn. I'm not dead. You know, I, I don't, you know, oh, it didn't materialize. And you know what? Low unemployment rates. The economy's doing great. You know, I'll vote Trump. Now, Trump would be winning. Trump would have over elect for, if there was no pandemic, Trump would have over 400 electoral, uh, electoral college votes. Um, it, it wouldn't be close. You know, you know, maybe California and some of these coasts would hold. Uh, you you get the left coast, but you might just have some blue in the northwest, some blue on the on the west coast, then red all the way in between. Um, why did why has that affected it so much, Daniel? What's the reason and the explanation for COVID making such a difference? So, if you look at the the numbers economically of of Donald Trump's presidency, um, you know, all the things you look at twenty nineteen, um, like every forecaster saying there's like a ninety nine percent, like no. No president with these type of numbers, right, in this type of economy will ever lose, right? So with the economy doing so well, this is like, he's not going to lose. Now, what's happened is because they've shut down the country for months, all year, they've bombarded people, they've put people out of work, they put stress on, um, you know, this is sort of, you know, the economy looks bad. I mean, Joe Biden was being so, and Kamala Harris, so dishonest to the page. Oh, look how many people are unemployed. This is what Trump has done to the economy. It's like, do you not know that every other country in the world is going through this right now? Like comparatively, you know, do you not realize that that Canada, like, it, like I hate Justin Trudeau as a, as a prime minister, but I'm not dumb enough to say, well, Justin Trudeau, it, he's responsible for all the unemployment and the terrible numbers prior to 2019, right? And then when we get into 2020. I gave everyone sort of a mitigating. Okay, the entire world was shut down. When the world economy shuts down, of course, everyone's economic numbers are going to plummet. So I can give some leeway on his 2020 stuff. Now, I, I do I like how he's handled the the pandemic? No, um, but. You know, I'm willing to be charitable for the sake of like intellectual honesty. There was no intellectual honesty from Kamala Harris and, and Joe Biden are trying to say, oh, Trump destroyed the economy with his COVID response. Like, come on, guys. Really? Re like, really? Like, make make a better argument. Um, had had on November 3rd, had, you know, had unemployment been at historic lows, had everyone been employed, had, you know, ha you know, only the intersectional nonsense and the academics and the media been screaming, you know, you would have seen you would have seen a, a legitimate red wave um, with, you know, with the economy doing so poorly, people's memories are pretty short term. So they go, well, I'm not doing so good now. I might change to vote it. Um, you, you can buy into some of that rhetoric. And I will point out, maybe the good thing about Joe Biden winning um, is we might be done with COVID-19 very soon, because then, you know, the current narrative is Donald Trump has personally murdered over 200,000 Americans. He went into their homes and he murdered them of COVID-19, right? It'll be great for the media to say, you know what, three months, all Joe Biden, after Joe Biden does something, like passes like, uh, you know, everyone must wear a mask inside bill and then, you know, assumes insane executive authority. A month later, they could say, well, you know, look at the ICU beds. And we were saying, look at the, we were talking about ICU beds, you know, months ago. Well, ICU cases are going down and it's really about cases and pandemic. It's not really about the numbers. The, everything you've been saying and we've been saying for the last, you know, six months, they'll start saying now and say, look what Joe Biden did. Okay, we can open up and the economy will go back up because you've opened the economy back up. And look at Joe Biden. He's a brilliant economic mind because look at the economy, economic numbers and no one will say, yeah, but look here. So the incentive for, you know, the, the globalist left to say, you know what, let's open back up you know, whatever, you know, Trump's gone because, you know, so I, I think, I think a lot of COVID is currently being used to hammer Trump. Um, if Joe Biden get, gets in, you know, after his first measures to stop COVID in his relief package, you know, you look at two months later, they say, look, Joe Biden fixed COVID and it's gone. Well, that there were huge so economic numbers. There were huge economic numbers in the United States. I mean, it was just released five days before the election. It was like 33% growth or something. Like it was just insane. I mean, it was coming out of COVID, but nobody heard about it. Same thing as three Nobel Peace Prize nominations for Trump. And no one heard about it. And Trump talked about that in his speech. He said, Melania, come look at the news tonight. There's going to be something you want to see. He says, I couldn't believe it. He says, the whole newscast, they didn't even mention it. He says, this is your president, right? Uh, if you look at the actual vote counts in a lot of these states, they're past 100%. And you have to ask yourself how that is possible. I mean, most elections, you're going to have maybe 70% if it's good uh, turnout. When you have past 100% turnout, I mean, clearly there is something wrong. And and this is what you see for all of the battleground states, Nevada, Pennsylvania, yep. Minnesota, North see, Carolina. Yeah. Those, those yeah. states have same-day registration. 
So if they don't have uh, same day registration, it's above 100% voter fraud. If they do, well, then you got to take some time and see how many people registered that day, then recalculate that number down the line. Um, but yeah, of course, you know, are some states coming in, you know, really high turnout? Like we're, we're going to have to wait and see. There's going to be a recount in Wisconsin. I'm not sure you'll change 20,000 in a recount, but, you know, stranger things have happened. Yeah. And I mean, this will go to the Supreme Court and Donald Trump said it at 221 in the morning. I mean, this is going to go to the Supreme Court. And it's a good thing he made that appointment because otherwise it yeah. would have been tipping five four the wrong way because somewhere along the the line Judge Roberts seems to have gotten compromised and no one can figure out based on his previous adjudication how he's come up with some of these decisions that he has. Uh, flip a coin basically, and it's John Roberts. I mean, John Roberts wrote, rewrote Obamacare to make it into law. Um, yeah, so John Roberts basically just yeah. It, 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 he, so. Yeah, for all the people saying the court's now six to three Republican, eh, more like five to four. And the thing with the Republican judges is a lot of them are, you know, constitutional originalists. So they, they don't, like, Republicans institute judges they hope don't vote on party lines, but vote according to the law, which is why you'll see a lot of the times Republican, Republican judges will dissent from the Republican legislature because they're doing their job as a Supreme Court. They're saying, is this law constitutional, which is their job, right? The Democratic judges, never deviate from the party lines, right? The the reason why Ruth Bader Ginsburg is a hero of the left is because, you know, she was basically said, I'm the queen of America. I rule by decree and I, you know, we follow our heart and, you know, sometimes there's draconian laws and I, I you know, all in favor for her fighting for women's rights in the 1960s. It would be ridiculous that, you know, if, if you know, Laura Lynn had to, you know, you know, get her husband's permission to do this live stream or something ridiculous or, I do. you know, mandatory. I have to get his or, or... <laughs> <laughs> He's the boss well, around right, but, here. <laughs> Don't but, say but anything Bruce other. Peter Ginsburg would rule by fiat. And, and this was lauded. And this is the exact opposite of Antonin Scalia's philosophy. I mean, it's nice. Uh, the fear and they're such great friends is a nice story. But, you know, this is, it's good, you know, Roberts is who knows. Um, we don't. No one knows what he thinks about anything until he says he does. Um, you know, you can pretty much understand where you know Thomas Gorsuch um, and hopefully Amy Coney Barrett fall on, on the things that they're originalists. Um, and then you know, um, you know, what's Alito going to do? What's Roberts going to do? Um, it's it's a fun guessing game, but um, yeah, it, it's really good that Trump got the Supreme Court. And I thought the biggest miscalculation of Biden. Um, is because one of the big drivers of the Republican vote for Trump in 2016 was, hey, the Supreme Court. Like, well, I might not like this guy, but the Supreme Court. Now, by Trump reporting Amy Comey Barrett, he might have lost some reluctant Republican support because he goes, well, we've already got the Supreme Court, so whatever. What Biden then did is then he talked about court packing and he wouldn't answer the question. So then that reignited the Republican saying, well, now I have to go out and vote because if I don't keep Trump in, Joe Biden's going to add two more, three more, four more justices. And it's going to be four more RBGs um, who are, you know, the ruling council of America. And then, you know, we have a super legislature that's unelected. Ruth Bader Ginsburg actually thought that uh, 12 year olds should have sexual consent and that bigamy should be legalized. And she was saying these things in the late 70s. That, that's just yeah, that's a bad idea. Nuttiness, isn't it? Yeah, bad idea. Yeah, bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> I say no. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, so um, as we as we close, I so appreciate what you guys have said. We could just go on and on. We have a huge audience watching right now because I think that nobody's thinking about much else than this uh, closing thoughts. Uh, Lee, who you know, do you want to predict how this is going to go ultimately? Are we going to have a Trump presidency again, reelected, or are we going to have a Biden pre presidency? Trump will win again. And uh, I did want to mention one thing I didn't get to. You know, I tried to look this up. I heard that there was an Obama-backed organization that was planning 500 violent protests across America following this election. And even the tweet on it, I've never seen this. The, the tweet was gone, but also the original article link. There was this really strange warning on my computer screen about defense and whatnot. And, and this is a, a dangerous to see. And it wasn't the normal one where you could get past it. So th there's very strange censorship going on. And uh, I do think that we are going to see a Trump victory in the end. And uh, the sooner it comes, the better, because the longer this drags out, the worse it's going to be. And I did want to say, Laura Lynn, because I know you care about this issue, Saskatchewan has its mask law uh, coming in, mandatory masks on Friday. So Black Friday came early. So I've got my mask right here. I hope they accept this. 
And, uh, and I'm just going to end with this. Years ago, we had the unknown comic or perhaps the known uncomic. I don't care which of those two you call me. Right. Wow. Wow. You know, maybe this is how we're going to have to go. We're going to have to have those masks. I know uh, there was an article. Uh, one kid uh, had a mask. It said, you know, um, Jesus loves me or something like that and was forced to take it off in school. So maybe maybe our masks just have to, you know, simply have some kind of crazy... Um, you know, statement, H how much you want to bet pretty soon that's outlawed, you know, who knows? Uh, Daniel, what do you say? Uh, well, first, before I go to you, Daniel, um, we have this uh, one, this Facebook page. I mean, speaking of things being censored, there was a Facebook page that they took down and they wouldn't allow to stay up. And I guess um, I'm trying to see the members. What was it called? Oh, stop the steal. And it had, you know, lots of members and everything, but, uh, 7,864? Oh, 364. Oh, the, that's the posts only. 364,000.3 members within a very short period of time, and they have taken that down. Stop the steal. You're not allowed to do that. So cancel culture. Daniel, who do you think is ultimately going to prevail? I'm not crazy enough to try and predict the election at this point, but if you want a prediction... I'll give you the craziest. I'll give the craziest scenario. Okay. okay. Arizona flips back to Trump. Uh, I think Nevada then goes blue. And we get into a state where Trump gets Pennsylvania, but there's another flip. And then Alaska. And then we get into a 269, 269 tie. Um, it goes to the courts. Then it goes to the Senate. Then it goes to the vice president. And we don't see a, uh, we don't see a, a declared winner until 2021. I will go with the absolute craziest scenario. That's what I'll predict. predict um, a tie. And then somehow Kanye's president. That's, that's, <laughs> that, that's what we're at the point. Right. Right. I love it. Okay. Well, thanks you guys. I do appreciate you so much um, spending uh, your time here. I know your time is very valuable and you came to talk to us about all of this going on. So thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. I love your mask, Lee and, um, and Daniel, keep up the good fight. Thanks for all you're doing on your, each of your respective shows. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for having me on, Laura Lynn. Luckily, you're good enough looking. You don't need to wear one of these. <laughs> well, <laughs> apparently I do, and I got to get my nails done. So, oh, my gosh. It's really annoying. I still I got to try to fight the mask thing in order to go get my nails done. And I'm going to try. I'm going to fight. But uh, I'm getting know, my doctor, hair done later. Right. Well, good for you. You need that. Uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry is uh, just, you know, getting increasingly difficult here in British Columbia. And Dr. Teresa Tam you know, and her cohort, uh, Dr. Fauci. Yeah, I don't know what to say. We'll, we'll cover that next week when the election's over. All right, take care, you guys. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right. You know, it's not easy to deliver the truth of what our sick world is doing, but for some of us, we feel that we have no choice because if we are silent about these abominable things, then we are letting evil go unchecked and we cannot do that. For those of you wonderful people who are writing me and are sharing your encouragement, I am deeply grateful. Thank you for all the letters that you've been sending. Thank you for the donations and the support. I found out that in order to speak the truth, you have to become very, very strong. If you would go to my website at www.lauralyn.tv, you'll find all of the ways that you can contact me. Remember, my friends, all is well. All is well. Thanks for joining me.